Okay. Let me see here. I'm just looking here, getting everything ready to go. Boom, boom. We're going to go out on uh, Facebook. Come on. Let's go. There we go. Uh, yes, we're streaming live on Facebook. Hello, everybody. How are you? See, it takes us a little time to get on here. Hello. And it's time for our Monday pop-up show, which I really enjoy and like. What is it? What is it there? Hmm. Got a zit. See, all these little things I have to worry about. Yeah, oh, look, I'm getting wrinkles here. We're going all the way down here. Hmm. God, I'm getting old. Do you realize that? I'm getting really old. Okay. We've got a lot of people. Boy, I've got a lot of people waiting at the very start here. All right. Well, let's get going here. Admit all. So far, Charlie Wallace is here. And Marjorie is here, and Paul Levin, and Charlene, and John Ewing, and Andrew Deutsch, and Brian Neary, Francine White, and of course, Edward Berger. That's right. That's right. Okay. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Boy, that's a lot of people to start off the show with, and we still don't have several people here. Uh, Albert said he might call in today. I did an interview with him earlier today. And uh, let me see here. Um and uh, uh, so, uh, where do we start? Gosh, hello! I just every it's a, a, a myriad of riches here. Where are you, Brian? You look like you're in the storeroom at your job. <laughs> uh, I'm in Sunnyvale City. This is actually my original office from when I used to run Sunnyvale. So I'm here today. So I'm here on Tuesday and Wednesdays. But they you run a yeah, UPS. You run a UPS outlet there. What is that? You can see. You can see they've uh, really respected me using my old office again. So yeah. Oh, so you yeah. left the office and they turned it into a storeroom. Is essentially what happened. Swag mm -hmm. stuff. Can you send me one of those? <laughs> yes. I mean, I, you know, I used to have a doctor who used to give me all the stuff he got from like uh, uh, pharmaceutical companies. Mm -hmm. And like I was uh, very big into taking Zoloft and he got mm -hmm. me like Zoloft refrigerator magnets and Zoloft <laughs> foot inserts and all kinds of things. It said Zoloft on them. So we had Earth, Earth Day celebration this week. So it's Earth Day and then more more swag. Oh wow! I have like boxes of shirts and jackets since twenty years I've been here. So, oh, come and send me send me all of them. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I'll wear them. I wear them because see, I wear t t shirts. And these are fading. These yeah. are all the ones that said nineteen thirty nine on them. You know, and that I'm an old person, and that's when I was born. And see, it's starting to fade. When it completely fades, I die. <laughs> no, no, no. God, stop it. <laughs> Well, stop washing them. <laughs> the stop wearing them. If she, well, if I knew it was going to kill you, I would have done these years ago. I would have washed them like crazy. Yeah. I have others, however. What did you use to manufacture, Brian? Uh, we manufacture uh, test kits for uh, DNA. We, oh, really? we use a... Yeah, so we use uh, DNA to detect uh, infectious diseases. So we started off when I first started, it was only, uh, we have a contract with post office and Northrop Grumman to test for anthrax at all the major hubs, all the hubs for US. So we started off with that with about after 9-11 happened. And then, um, yeah, so then we got into- what do, what, do you need, what do you need to test DNA, saliva? Yeah, yeah, you just do a sample. Well, yeah, there's yeah, there's some, a couple that we do, we use uh, stool samples. So those uh, instructions you are what? stool samples. You heard them. <laughs> so, so when I have to sign off documentation, they show a picture like this is not enough. This is just right. Oh, is God. So I have to sign those off to it's say yes. information. <laughs> that, that's good. good yeah. Okay. So, we, actually, the people who started the company are really, really smart. They they built everything. So they built the consumable product where you put the sample in and they built the the instrument and then all the chemicals that go in. And if you knew like about Theranos, we actually do what Theranos tried to do. 
So we have a we have a cartridge. Well, don't try, don't try too hard, or you're going to wind up in jail. I know. <laughs> you have a sample. I don't have any samples here, but but the, in this cartridge, there are all these little chambers, and so it moves all the sample back and forth and grabs chemicals and mixes everything. It's really genius. So, so you can do all, a whole bunch of things at one time. Yeah, actually, from our competitor, they use group sampling. They have to do batches, and we can we barcode the cartridge, so we can do any kind of test at any time. So it's a big advantage. So we do GPS strep. We do we got into HIV, HPV, HPC, and then we get into. Uh, well, I mean, flu was our biggest season even before COVID. So after COVID hit, it was like getting blank checks from our parent company. <laughs> so how can you build more? So yeah. Yeah, I'm going to bill you for the advertising time on this. <laughs> That's fine. All, all 40 people watching, no, no problem. I'll cover yeah, yeah. <laughs> A penny a person. A penny a person. That's my cost per thousand. Uh, hmm. Hello. Uh, uh, let's see. Who should I say hello to? Hello, Marjorie. Hi. How you doing? How's everything going with you? Okay. Hmm. Good day. Since I live here with you, but don't pay attention. Oh, we know that. Yeah. <laughs> How's your how's your heel today? I'm using that thing you gave me. It helps. Yes, yes, that's what I use for my. I'm seeing the doctor today. tomorrow. Yeah, it's uh, she's a, she. A, a, how many doctors' visits do you have this week? A lot. <laughs> and it's not like I'm looking at a woman who's dying here, you know. But you got most of my stuff is bone related. Most of my stuff's boner related, so we got something in common. <laughs> Paula, how you doing out there in uh, Cleveland, or we're near Cleveland, wherever it is? Me? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, good. It's a nice good. day in Akron, actually. Yeah. Uh huh. Wonderful, wonderful. And uh, she was lucky a couple of weeks ago. You got to see the um, the, the, the total eclipse. Total eclipse of the sun. Mm -hmm. It was a, it was a spiritual experience. I've been told it was wonderful, you know. It really is. But you know, Marjorie and I, uh, we're going to have enough money. We're going to be able to travel the world, so we could just find some other place that's going to do it next. You know, and we'll can, be there. There, uh, there are something like twenty three of those events everywhere on the planet every year. You know, it's not just, uh, but it was it was here. I mean, it's a big deal. <laughs> yeah. Right, or am I right, Charlie? There's only thirteen full moons a year. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, uh, yeah, I guess. Okay. Well, yeah. I think you should take Charlie along. Does it? Does it, does it <laughs> do, do we ever have partial solar eclipses where this moon isn't a full moon? No, the moon is a new moon when you have a solar eclipse. It's a full moon when it's a, a lunar eclipse. Right. Well, I, I've seen a lunar eclipse. Yeah. Completely. In fact, I thought well, you're counting both lunar and solar, then it could be 26. Yeah. Yeah. Well, was, what was the one in 2017? That was a solar eclipse. That was solar? Yeah. yeah. Lunar eclipses, the Earth comes between the sun and the moon. Yep. So that's what causes a moonal eclipse. So. Speaking of space, have you guys seen the CNN document? I don't know if you guys talked about that last week. The the uh, space shuttles? No. Oh, no. The CNN has one. It's uh, space shuttles. And they it, it's up to it's episode two of four, I think. But they actually talk about, like, you know, when, when it went up and they lost some tiles and the details of people who knew and they didn't let the people you know on the <clears> shuttle know yet and they were trying to get pictures of it they were trying to align military satellites and trying to they see if they could angle the shuttle to get the right exposure for a picture to see how bad they were um it, it's pretty interesting it's, it's pretty detailed and they had a lot of people speaking who were there yeah we should check it out yeah yeah, yeah. There's another solar eclipse coming where one of those tiles is going to block out the uh, sun. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let's see here. Oh, and of course, we have Francine's back this week. Hello, Francine. Hello. Hi. And how are you doing? I'm okay. Yeah. What's the weather like in New York City? I haven't been out yet. <laughs> oh, okay. Neither have we. 
I haven't been out. I haven't actually haven't been out. Yeah. Uh, what, since. Is, what is the matter with you, New York people? You never leave your the inside. I'm fucking cold, yeah. Paula. <laughs> yeah, well, to begin with, it's cold, but more than that, mm -hmm. uh, I hate to say this for all you people who would be tourists, but we who live here in New York find there's really nothing to do. Exactly. <laughs> you could walk over to Columbia and, and get in the middle yeah. of all the demonstrations. Well, I was going to do yeah, that, but I had to go up a whole big, heavy flight of stairs. In fact, I was talking to Albert today about it, and he said, yeah, he did it once. He said, that's the most rugged set of stairs I've ever gone up. I've done it. It's from the park that goes right well, up. I've done it, too. Up. But uh, we're not in any shape right now to do it, I don't think. But we could try. Hmm. And go up there. I would love to go up and demonstrate. No. You know, I just, I'm bothered by that whole thing. I'm bothered by the way it's being parsed. You know, um, I have been the subject in my lifetime of endless cases of anti-Semitism. Uh, I was brought up in an all-Italian neighborhood, and uh, I pretty much was known, as, I thought my name was Dirty Jew, okay? <laughs> yeah. Um and I know what anti-Semitism is when I see it. And just because you're against Israel in this whole thing, uh, against Zionism, basically, doesn't make you anti-Semitic. And they're assuming that all the people that are pro-Palestinian are anti-Semitic and they should get them off the campus. No. And I don't know that I agree with that. I think a place of learning, if you can't demonstrate at a place of learning, where can you demonstrate? You know, but all these white non-Jewish politicians are saying, "Oh, you know, like Kath, our Hochul, our uh, our esteemed governor, uh, is saying, hey, you know, these kids have no right to be there.' Blah blah blah. It's anti it's anti-Semitic, and I'm going, I'll decide what's anti-Semitic, at least for me. But don't you let me know, you goyim. You know, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> she's the worst, though. She is the worst governor. Yeah, she's not. Uh, we get the worst governor. What? No, worst governor is please. Charlie lives in Texas. Well, that's <laughs> true. And yeah, you know why true. somebody doesn't wheel him in front of a truck? I have no <laughs> idea. Piece of work. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> Gee, are we getting political today? I'm no, sorry. I'm please to not. <laughs> Yeah, by the way, just a quick poll. How many here think Donald Trump is guilty? <laughs> okay, the jury has decided. The How many people could serve on a jury? You know, like I I thought I thought about that a lot. If if I they just asked got a me to, if, I, if I could be fair, um, Ooh, Andrew. Uh, what is that? Uh, oh, okay. That's the jury came today for jury duty. Really? Yeah. yeah, I just I just did it. A year and a half ago, so I don't have to do it again. It says every two years. Hmm. Yeah, I. Uh, but uh, 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 I think you know. My feeling is, you know, they can say, "Well, we heard on your your Facebook page how much you hate Trump, so you can't be on the jury." And the fact is, you put me on a jury. I know how to be fair and impartial. You know, I'll listen to how the the case they're trying to make, and if they don't make the case against him, then I will vote for him. You know, I'm. Just, that's how honest I am. But to ask people if they know, do you know who Donald Trump is? Yes. Okay, go away. <laughs> <laughs> if a person doesn't know who Donald Trump is, are they fit to be on a jury? I mean, are they fit to be in the human race? More, more importantly, Alex, did you see the report that Trump was not only falling asleep, but farting all through court. Yes, the farting part. The farting part. Farting? I, really I, I figured it out. He got He's so farting. pissed off at the gag order, he figured he'd make everyone else gag too. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't clever hear, I didn't hear that, actually. <laughs> the farting thing? Yeah. What was it was you pretty loud. About? I could hear it from here, and I'm in Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, uh, but I mean, this whole idea of, of and this isn't a political discussion. This is just mm -hmm. logic. Do you really yeah. want somebody to sit on a jury who doesn't know who Donald Trump is, who doesn't <laughs> have an opinion about Donald Trump? I mean, everybody has an opinion about Donald Trump one way or the other. Yeah. 
that. That could not have been the question. Uh, the, their question is, uh, do you have an opinion of Donald Trump? Yeah, that was right, but it wasn't, do you know who Donald Trump is? I mean, that, that's that. Oh, no, be... it wasn't that simple. But, you know, the fact was that you had to be a person that would go, Duh, I don't have an opinion about <laughs> Donald Trump. You know, oh, he he does some good things. He does some bad things. I could be on a Good. Come on, Dopey. Be on our, <laughs> be on our jury. You know, it's ridiculous. Just ridiculous. But uh, I, I mean, I, if they if I got called for that jury duty, I would lie my <laughs> on that on that thing because I'd want to be on the jury. Yeah, and so they but they they found him they found him pretty fast. So you know, but it's not fair. It's completely, you know. I mean, it's a really, very sad day. Yeah. That's what he opens everything up with when he sees the press set at the courtyard or the, the courtroom. It's a very you, sad day today. You, 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 and I'll post it all being capitals. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you know who Donald Trump is? Isn't he the guy jerking off two people at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> Boy. He must and, you know, he, so, everybody's he must been joking so about mad. that lately, and he, they're still doing it. He must get so mad. I mean, the stuff that they put on him is so funny. Well, he had to sit in in uh, in the court while they read some of the answers about what people felt about him, mm. <laughs> and uh, it was kind of like mean tweets on Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway, Charlene, how you doing, kiddo? I'm doing good. We just moved into a new place, so I'm just trying oh. to get set. But otherwise, I'm good. Got moved in, huh? Yep. Guess who's here for me? Second time in a day. Albert is coming. Albert's here. Right. Yeah, Albert's almost here. He's got almost a, here. Click on his camera. Are you there, Albert? Not yet. Not yet. There he, there, he is. Is. there he is. I had to approve the fact that it's recording. So <laughs> mm. oh, you had to approve that this is being recorded. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there's cameras all over the world recording stuff. Why do we have to approve? And they, and they don't ask us if we want never, to be recorded. Never. I, I'm sorry to interrupt. Hello, everybody. Go ahead. <laughs> hey, Hi. This is being this recorded, is, just in case you didn't This is know. the second time today I've talked to him. Much too, much Boom. too long with you. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, uh, but I do a thing with him for the nighttime show. So, you know. Uh, and uh, he is, uh, uh, we were... He is my former producer. Uh, we were talking on this thing today about prepping my show, doing the prep for my show. Right. Which you've never done yourself, obviously. No, no. no I, here's the thing. I had a woman. Her name was uh, uh, Lynn Samuels. Anybody know Lynn, Sa Lynn Samuels? Don't oh, tell this whole lady. tale again. You oh. keep telling this tale. She, she was the most miserable human being I've ever <laughs> met in my life. And when she died, I that's had an understatement, by the way. Do you remember when she, died, right him, right? when she died? Uh, number one, she was in her apartment for three days before anybody nobody found her. Knows. Nobody really cared. You know, <laughs> but it's true. It's absolutely yeah. true. I think the cat ate half of her. Uh, <laughs> and anyway, so then we do it. I'm I'm asked, would you do a tribute for, for you know, Lynn on your show? And I went, well, I don't know. I'm not the best person to do it because she hated me. <laughs> she really hated me horribly, she right, did. Albert? She might, might have hated me more than you. Why you more than me? I, I Maybe by association because we <laughs> we had some real screaming matches in the office at times. Oh, really? Oh, what I was her job? What was her job? She was a host. <laughs> no, she no, was, no, was no. like what Alex was. Yeah. yeah. She, oh, oh, she did, really? it, she did a show like mine. She did a talk show. Yeah. And um, she was very famous. She was kind of famous here in New York, right? Yeah. yeah you would have she was before you, right, Honorably. Alex? Yeah, what? She was before you. Yeah, yeah. She was I mean, not oh. before me on the air, but she was in New York before me. No, yeah, but on I, the air, when, when was she? Oh, she was on at, late at night, wasn't she? No, she yeah, was on after you. Then they moved her to weekends to to tell her mm, you're you're getting out here. Well, that didn't. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, she she dropped dead in her apartment. And they found her body about three days later. Uh, they couldn't tell, but because the smell was the same, uh, and and 
Uh, and, so it really and, and she hated me and she hated Albert. And I said, why should I do the thing? And they said, oh, just because you're the only other live program on Sirius <laughs> XM. So I said, oh, OK, I'll do it. So Albert, true to his great producer abilities, gets a whole bunch of people to come and be on the show, you know, including her sister. Ooh. Right. And I, I said uh, um, to her in the interview, I said, so what do you remember most about Lynn? And she said she was the most horrible person I've ever oh, met. No. Something <laughs> like that, right? Right, Albert? What did she say exactly? She didn't quite say that, but she said something in the way of she was a very difficult person to deal with. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> she she couched it very nicely, but you knew exactly. But what I she had did. no, she didn't couch it nicely as I remember it. I had her on because I figured, oh, you know, the sister's going to say, oh, and I loved her so much, and she was, <laughs> and she comes on, she goes, it, basically, she says Lynn was an asshole. <laughs> it's basically the summation of what she was saying, and uh, I'm going well. I guess my opinion of her wasn't wrong. You know. <laughs> But I mean, we couldn't even, and so when I say she was a miserable human being, I was not alone, you know. Um, and I, you have to admit, I was always very nice to Lynn. I always tried to be nice with Lynn because I knew she, if I got nasty with her, then she'd have a reason to really go after me. Well, she used to, she used to try to tempt me after we had a few, a few uh, back and forths. And I said, I'm not going to deal with this nonsense anymore. She's obviously got something under her skin, which I don't know. And Alex doesn't know. And many people don't know what the problem is. Mm -hmm. so every time I used to come down the hall, she used to, she used to not under her breath. She used to say, Oh, here comes Alex Bennett's producer again. You know, some <laughs> in a nasty way. And I, and I used to turn around and go like that. <laughs> <laughs> smile and walk away and that would piss her off even more well i always treat her great with <laughs> if it's that. possible the only photo i have of lynn is with lynn and who was the other guy who died the uh, talk show host that we had on from he was did his stuff from my house chicago somewhere else and he came in once a week you know what i'm talking about he was over on msnbc too doing his show i don't know who you're talking about yeah uh, yeah I'm, I'm trying to remember the name not now. bob grant no, 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 no. Bob is a great guy. I like yeah, him. except for he stole lunches. <laughs> what? Bob Grant now, let's explain this to people who don't know who Bob Grant was. Bob Grant was a conservative talk show host. Yeah, He, he was, was one of the originals. Yeah, and I worked- Even with, before Rush Limbaugh. I think. I, I worked what, what year span are you talking? What decade? Oh, well, 60s, Bob, 60s and 70s. Bob Grant, we're talking about my time at oh. WMCA. That's where we worked together. Mm. And we liked each other. I mean, we argued with each other on the air, but off the air, we, we liked each other. And um, um, where was I going with this? Bob Grant. You were trying to oh, figure was, out who this guy from Chicago was that hung out with. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to remember his name now. He died. Not the redhead Ed, whatever. Ed, from... Ed, 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 uh, Ed uh, uh, Schultz. Ed oh, Schultz. Ed Schultz. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I have a picture of me in the middle, and on either side of me, Ed Schultz and Lynn Samuels, <laughs> two of the most miserable people in radio. Oh, Ed was no fun either. He was no fun. No, no. Well, he used to, I, I heard him with his, with his people he worked with, right? His crew, you know, yeah, producer and his assistant producer and whatever. And he was yelling and screaming at them. I mean, I, I couldn't understand why they stuck with him. You know, so, I mean. Hey, uh, check. Yeah. <laughs> you know, how much do you, uh, okay, let me ask you a question here, <laughs> Albert. How much would you put up with for a paycheck? Depends how much the paycheck is. Well, how much was the paycheck at Fox? Um, I don't remember. It was it was it was probably close to a hundred grand a year. Yeah, yeah. How but, long did you last at Fox? Well, two days, but that had nothing to do with personality. <laughs> it had nothing to do with personality. <laughs> no, but you lasted a fox for two days and you took a walk. Tell them why you took a walk. We were talking about this earlier. 
because they wouldn't let me do my podcast on uh, GabNet. They said, I, I, you're not allowed to do that. I said, they yeah, said, give, give that up or, um, you, or can't. You, you can't work here. I said, well, all right. That's his okay. I'm not last day then. Here. This is after he goes through a whole indoctrination period, what they give you. <laughs> well, I wouldn't call it an indoctrination. <laughs> Training. You had yeah. to go. Well, onboarding. Onboarding? Yeah. yeah. Orientation, yeah. Right. That kind. He walked out of Fox after two days, and he was going to get $100,000 a year, and that was a couple of years ago when it was <laughs> worth a little more than it is now. The vibe was no good. The only thing that was good about it was Alan Combs. That was yeah. the only thing that was good. And the other people that worked with him. was a good guy. The vibe was good really guy. spooky. It, it it did make me feel good to go in. The, the vibe, what was, here, make everybody feel better. What was the vibe at Fox like? <laughs> what, what do you mean? What was it like? What it was, was the vibe just, like at Fox? It, it, was, it, was like, um, it was like people did their own thing. Because I saw all the big hosts, all the hosts you knew at the time not just radio, but television. And they were all in their secluded little offices and clustered together. Didn't, didn't have a feeling <laughs> of any place I worked before, which was always everybody hung out with each other, or at least in passing was decent to each other. Even Lynn at times was decent to you and I, um, but the, it was just a weird feeling, just a strange feeling. It, it was, a, it was, uh, you know, most radio stations that I want to be at were a joyful pursuit. You know, people were having fun. They were enjoying what they were doing, right. you know, and uh, over there, it didn't look like that. In other well, words, I didn't, get that, I didn't get that feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Mm. So anyway, so when you say, you know, giving up jobs because you don't like them, you're, you're a good example of that. Did yeah. that Fox have anything to do with present Fox? Yeah. As Fox knew, he went to work for yeah, Fox. Fox Radio, same Fox. same company. Same company. You know that you know the building they show at the beginning, Fox News News Corp building on on Sixth Avenue in New York. That's where the radio uh, uh, studios were. Nice yeah. studios too. Yeah, this was only like ten years ago, right? Uh yeah, 10, 11 years. Yeah, ten yeah. years, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, the same and Fox News. Yeah, I was telling him too. He was went to work for Alan Combs, who I say was a really sweet, nice guy, decent, you know? guy. and decent guy. And when he they were going to hire Albert to be his producer, he called me up and said, "You don't mind if I use Albert as my producer?" Now he didn't have to do that, but he was nice enough to do that. But so, you had a relationship with him as well, so it's a, that's a decent guy. Does that? Yes. Yeah. 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 He's a good guy. Good guy. So anyway, um, what, what are we even watching Marjorie that we enjoyed? Oh, you know, we watched, it's a long slog. This, um, uh, OJ Simpson versus, uh, no, it was OJ Simpson. OJ Simpson. Well, yeah. It was it was about him, Alex. On, on Netflix, which, Came out several years ago, but boy, was that good! Because what yeah. it did is it took the whole O.J. Simpson thing, and also put it in the context of race relations in L.A. And well, kind of, well, also America, yeah, where things yeah, but, were. But, but you know, I mean, it was L.A. where you had the uh, Rodney King beating, for instance, uh, and and the police department was so oppressive down there. By the time they got to the O.J. trial. You had a jury that was ready to find him innocent just to find a black guy innocent of anything in L.A., you know, and it really goes through the whole it, the race thing and everything. And by the time it's over with, you understand why they came up uh, with, uh, uh, you know, a uh, an opinion on the whole thing uh, that came out like that. So it, it's really a great, great documentary. But. Each very episode, good. It's very long. Each episode's an hour and a half, and there are five of them. So, <laughs> so you have to like good we, we watch this thing. Everybody seems to be watching now about the kids and Nickelodeon, the and the the atmosphere at Nickelodeon, with all the kids being diddled. Is that the way to we, put it? We finished one, it, one it didn't we, Alex? Yeah, we finished it. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that that's another thing we were watching. And they just tried to watch Franklin, but it's so boring, it's ridiculous. 
What? They just released for streaming. Remember the, the competitor for Saturday Night Live Fridays? Hmm? Remember Fridays, the show that came on again Saturday Night Live? It's finally available to stream. Yeah, well, that's with Larry David's on. Larry David, Michael Richards, Blankfield, Melanie <laughs> Chardoff. Where where is it available? Freebie and Tubi and Shout and it's on a Amazon Prime. I think you can rent it, but it's weird. Oh, really? There's a couple episodes missing. The two that I wanted to see because of the musical act are two that are missing from from. The well, stream. they may not have gotten. Well, if they had, didn't have the rights to show the musical acts, they could just simply cut them out of the uh, out of the. Yeah, but that, you know. the musical acts when they go on a show like that, they sign away. But uh, it's 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 really funny. The first couple. No, they, they don't. You, did you say they sign away? Yeah, when when a musical act goes no, on. No, a they don't. Show. No, they don't. Uh, Letterman, for instance, when he shows his old shows on on YouTube, cuts out all the music because the music is in cop is 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 uh, published. All it's the old Saturday Night Lives that are, that you can watch, they always have the musical acts. Um, only if they're running it on the network. If they're running an old episode of Saturday Night Live. It usually doesn't have the uh, the musical acts there. That's weird because I, I, I watch them on on uh, Peacock. I think it is. Yeah, but I mean they 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 don't because musical acts want to get paid. The pub, <laughs> people who wrote the music want to get paid. The two the two that are missing. One of them is uh, Warren Ziva, and the other one's Ian Hunter. And they're those episodes are they don't have the episode at all. Not yeah, not the musical act. Mm. episodes go. Yeah, this was a show they put out on. Where was it? Was it? Uh, I want to say it was NBC, or not NBC, uh, uh, ABC, ABC or CBS. It was one of those. Or things. was it Fox? No, Fox didn't exist back then. No, yeah? okay. Uh, and they Fox. did the show called Fridays, which was kind of Saturday Night Live on Fridays. And <laughs> Michael Richards was on it. Larry David, uh, yes. one of the few jobs. Larry the Charles, show. huh? Larry Charles, the one who later went on to direct and produce a bunch of shows. Blake yeah. Field, Melanie Chardoff. It's a bunch of. Yeah, that was, and, and I look back, I saw some of them on YouTube, and they're not bad. They're not well, bad at all. There's one where they do a news report about the, these people that go out and beat Muppets to make clothing for the new fashion trend. Pretty funny. Diner of ABC. the Living Dead. What'd you say? It was on ABC. 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 Okay. Diner of the Living Dead is a skit that was really funny. Yeah, a couple goes into a diner full of zombies and orders food. But you can see where where you know Larry David got the idea to use Michael Richards on mm -hmm. Seinfeld. Yeah, you know, and Larry David's almost unrecognizable on the show. Yeah, in fact, they, I think they used Melanie Chartoff on Seinfeld on one or two occasions. You know, probably. Yeah, uh, but uh, it wasn't a bad show at all. Not a bad show at all. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, and did we see it? There were, were there haven't been any movies we've watched, right, Marjorie? I'm trying to think. I don't think uh, so. We watched them all. So we, we know we watched. Anybody ever see the Bad Lieutenant with Harvey Keitel? I've seen oh, both of them. Go. Yeah. <laughs> what? Oh, there's two of them. With Harvey Keitel? No, one with Harvey Keitel, and then it was redone by. Uh, uh, what's the famous German director? Vim Vendors or yeah, one of those guys yeah. re redid it in Louisiana. I think with mm -hmm. uh, Nicholas Cage. Oh yes, I remember that. Mm -hmm. but, I can't uh, imagine anyone better than Harvey Cartel for that. Ha Cartel is the best in that movie. Right. Yeah. It's about a cop who a just dirty cop. It, not only he's not he's a dirty cop, but he's also a filthy dirty cop. I mean it. <laughs> It's so unrelentingly depressing. Um, he's a bad lieutenant, is what he's he a is. bad lieutenant. But I remember, see, what I remember about bad lieutenant is I saw it, and I went, "Wow, you know, this is a pretty rough movie." I mean, it, the, one of the scenes in there is raping a nun. Okay, um, and it was You're not supposed to do Abel that. Fernandez, who I got to know later on, and it was just brutal. So I say to my this girlfriend, I'm going with. Because I'm out there at a place. Uh, hey, who you know, did you say just now? Hmm? Abel Ferrara. Abel Ferrara. Yeah. Right. yeah. Which girlfriend? Uh, I, I, I'm a fiddle girl. Uh, oh. Yeah. So anyway, I always had nicknames for my girlfriends. 
So uh, I said, there's this great movie I saw. It's called Bad Lieutenant. We, sh you sh we should watch it. So she said, okay, there's a blockbuster down the street. This is before there was so much cable that you could find the movie somewhere, right? There's so many uh, mm -hmm. internet where you can find the movie everywhere. So I went. we went down and I went to Blockbuster. I said, do you have Black Bad Lieutenant? And he says, back there. I went back there and there it is, Bad Lieutenant. We bring it back to her place. I said, you're going to love this. This thing is so unrelentingly depressing and <laughs> horrible. Sounds like fun. Well, we start watching it and I go, I don't remember this movie. This was the edited for blockbuster version. Oh. Edited. And it was it, it, it was Bad Lieutenant. It was Harvey Keitel. But it was kind of like they had retitled it The Slightly Bad Lieutenant. I mean, <laughs> it was horrible. And I'm looking at her going, this is not the same movie. The, the rape scene with the nun isn't there. All but we the just saw this we full saw frontal it. nudity of Kaitel. But Alex, we just saw it about a week ago. Yeah, but we saw it on the Criterion. Uh, yeah, the original. Yeah, because we subscribe to everything now. Okay, because we have nothing else to do with our miserable lives but watch endless movies. So the one thing about the Criterion thing was that it was it had. Uh, um the full version you know where you see harvey Keitel's penis yes you do yes and quite a bit of it too i mean it wasn't just a short scene or a short flash and marjorie, <laughs> no <pun intended. laughs> marjorie is the queen of is there, is there any penis in this picture i only yeah. want to see penis huh i only want to see penis you only want to see penis yeah, make a guy on screen. Is he? Are we going to see penis? Hey, listen, I got a good movie I watched uh, yesterday. In fact, uh, what? it's an older movie called Women in Love. Oliver Reed does a wrestling scene nude yes. with the other co-star. It's one yes. of the early nude scenes in in film. Or I think wow. early seventies. Yeah, two guys naked guys wrestling with each other. Yes, yeah, yes. I remember. Yeah. What's it called? Women in Love. Wow. Lots of, love. You want to watch it, Marjorie? Lots of penis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I also saw one of the worst movies ever, Caligula. Yeah. What a horrendous movie! Yeah, oh, it's, amazing. it's amazing, you know. And it will show. It's a perfect example that British actors will work anything as yeah. long yeah. as they're getting paid for it. Yeah. Because they consider it a job in in England. Yeah. You know, Helen Mirren was in that movie, by the yeah, way. Yeah, Helen Mirren is movies. in that movie. John, John Gielgud is in mm -hmm. that movie. Mm -hmm. Who played uh, Caligula? Huh? Who played the role of Caligula? Um, oh, McDonald. Uh, uh, oh, McDonald. Uh, McDowell. 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 Yeah. Not not the monkey. Roddy. Not not Roddy. The other one. Yeah. yeah. McDowell. Malcolm. No, Malcolm, Malcolm McDowell. Malcolm McDowell. Oh my gosh. That, yeah. that was like one of the first. Well, I was talking about penis. He was all over the place in that. Well, no, he, <laughs> was, he didn't show his penis. Either. He didn't show his penis what in that. Happened movie. Is, what happened is, here's what happened to these people. Guys, these poor people, you know, you're <laughs> wondering why does John Gielgud do what is essentially a porno film? Because there were hardcore porno scenes in the film. Okay. Hardcore sex. Yeah. Hello to Mandy, by the way. Uh, when she uh -oh. gets here let's clean this up uh, now uh, um, <laughs> i um where were we oh yes the, the film was essentially a porno film there were hardcore porno scenes in it penetration well, the the penthouse did the movie well the the difference you see you have to understand that the the difference between pornography and non-pornography is that it's explicit there's insertion you there there are people giving each other <laughs> head Things like that. Well, yeah, what turn happened? it up, Mandy. They, turn it up. Turn the volume up. <laughs> when they made this. It's like it's going out into my office. You know? <laughs> we just started when they with made this. this so. We're talking about, we're talking about the work. movie Caligula. So, oh, yeah. my Latin teacher wanted to take us to go see that. And she goes, I'm going to have to get a permission slip. But I think it was ended up being nixed. Yeah, well, you're gonna need a permission slip from your priest to see that. Not <laughs> right, your parents. 
<laughs> it was released as a porno film. There was hardcore pornography in it. But when the guys, people made it, like McDowell and John Gielgud and Helen Mirren yeah. and uh, all these other people that were in it, they're well-known, well-respected actors and actresses, uh, the porn wasn't in it. What happened was they brought the film back here. They said, this film stinks. Let's put some porno yes. scenes in it. And they went out and shot scenes to insert into the film. So you'll yeah. never see, you know, Malcolm McDowell in anything that's hardcore in that film or Helen Mirren or, or Helen John Gale Good or whoever, because those scenes were shot later. But yeah. Mirren shows her breasts in the movie. Does she? Oh, yeah. yeah. She shows her breasts. a set of breasts they were, by the way. She was pretty proud of those breasts. But. Her time. For good reason. She was gorgeous. You know yeah. something? She's still gorgeous. She I mean, is. she's yes, old, she but is. she's still yes. gorgeous. Yes. She's yes. still co a commanding presence, you know? Yeah, I want to know how your Latin teacher got a hold of that movie. <laughs> <laughs> Amanda. No, it would have been at the theaters if it was just open, because there was no video back yeah. then. Yeah. Oh, she, oh the, she took the students there. She, she was wanted there. to, from, yeah. what, from what Mandy said, I think. Oh, and by the way, the film was written by Gore Vidal. Yeah. Yeah. You know, who, by the way, wanted his name taken off of it. Mm -hmm. It was so bad. Yeah. <laughs> and I think they, they replaced it with, what was the name they used for people who didn't want their credit? Alan Smithy. Alan Smithy. Yeah. Have you ever seen an old movie? I'll, I'll tell you an Alan, a good example of an Alan Smithy film. Uh, the original Dune. Uh, oh. What's his name? Um, David Lynch. A different David Lynch. Mm -hmm. Thought the movie was so terrible that he took his name off of it. He was right. It and, was terrible. And they, and they put it in some of the prints. It says Alan Smithy. Though not as bad as Caligula. <laughs> <laughs> it's a horrible film. Yeah, no, the original Doom was just boring. You know, he, he didn't like it also because... David Lynch didn't want to make it, but he he made it because it was part of a deal to make another one of his films. So he did it. Uh, and it's a it's a pretty drastic film. They have this month on Criterion. They have a thing called uh, Razzie Film Winners. The Razzies are the awards every year for the worst films of the year. And they have a whole selection of them. <clears throat> showgirls. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I can't remember there were, but there are about 12 of them there and and one of them uh, was uh, uh, what was it oh uh, there was a David Lynch film there and I'm trying to remember what it was maybe it was the racer head no 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 really. way that's a classic <laughs> that's a classic yeah but anyway so you know anyway so I'm trying to think. Uh, any any other things we watch? There, there, there are two things that I'm watching. I'm like in the middle of. One is this one where the 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 mayor or somebody comes into this this uh, prison facility and they're gonna let the doors open and keep the doors open so all the inmates because they usually only open the doors for one hour a day. They're trying this experiment at this this prison. Um, sounds like nobody's watching prison movies. Okay, this so, is a documentary, right? Huh? This is a documentary, right? Yes, documentary yes. Series, right. Yeah. Yeah, so I just started that one. And then there's another one. It's called Eat This, Not That on Netflix. It just started. And that one, they're taking these twins. There's four sets of twins that they're taking. And they're giving different diet, like a vegetarian diet or uh, meat, you know, more meat products. And because the these twins are, you know, twins are identical, of course, but they're they're so close in DNA that that's the only way that they can really try to see how diets work. A different diet works in the same kind of person with their genetic buildup. So uh, that one's pretty interesting, also. Hmm. What was the first one called, Brian? It's called Lockdown. I think it's called Lockdown yeah, or something. Yeah, okay. it's pretty so, new. So my question is: Did any of the people come back after the hour? <laughs> they're, oh, no 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 so no they're usually only one hour uh, of lockdown in in the in their hall you know in the with that the h cell block and so they only let them you know com be community for like one hour a day right is they're locked down for 23 hours so now mm -hmm. this this guy comes in and what is he the mayor i think the mayor or something but 
now they're going to try this experiment of, of keeping the, the doors open, their cells open all day to see how long this will last. So they just opened the doors when I was watching. So And, and was that uh, known as Shiv time? <laughs> Netflix is Netflix. So, yeah. So What's it called, Brian? It's called Lockdown or something like that. I'll, but it's, I'll it's, a, it's a documentary, right? Yeah, yeah. And they're, they're both pretty new on Netflix. It just popped up. So, uh, yeah, I don't know how it ends, but I'm going through them right now. We'll yeah. check them out. Yeah. I'm going to bet it ends with a lot of fighting. That's, I know. It's <laughs> yeah. like, I know. I don't know how this guy thinks that's going to work. Very tough. They, they lock him down for 23 hours for a reason, right? <laughs> so, yeah. Well, it, usually they lock him down for 23 hours if it's a, a, a what do you call it, dangerous group of people. You yeah, know, there you know, are murders. Maximum there. security prisons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, yeah, it, it's pretty interesting to see, but we'll see how it ends. <laughs> well, they, you know, should all take them out for lunch, things like that. Well, because you know the personalities, right? So you have these older guys who are in there and they're trying to sort of take control saying, you know, you guys, we have to act well. We have to do this. We have to do this. And now the younger kids are sort of looking at those older guys and say, wow, they're going to run this place. I don't think so. You know, so yeah, they don't want to hear starting. it. Yeah. 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 So they're starting that friction already. So it's going to be a big brawl, I think, at the end. I don't think that's the solution. I think the solution is squid game. That <laughs> instead of putting these people in prison, put them in a squid game situation. And the good thing is one of them will get out. Yes. Huh? The other 465, no good. <laughs> that's that's squid game. Squid prison. <laughs> they're gone. They're, they're kind we, we can all another, bet on that. Ep, the, another series of Squid Game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a great uh, show. It is. I great show. Watching it and figuring I oh okay. You're talking about the 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 real one or the or the or the drama? Uh, uh, I'm talking about the no the drama. Oh, no. watch the real one. The real one is compelling. Yeah. Really good. The yeah. 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 Four hundred and fifty six yeah. people get knocked off one by one by one by one. It's fascinating. They don't die. Like, no, they don't die. No, but. No. But they have little packets in their in their yeah. shirts, which explode after they lose whatever the challenge is, and yeah. it kind of looks like they're dead. They're yeah. gone. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow, squid prison. That's what I think we should do. Yes, Come well, I was talking to you about and... this earlier today, but we have found, I think, the most engrossing piece of television that Marjorie and I have ever come upon. What? I came upon it last Friday, Saturday, oh, Thursday Alex. night, Fra oh Thursday, night. <laughs> Thursday night, and uh, then my friends were here on Friday, and what was, I guess it was Friday night, maybe Saturday, Friday night, we come back here, and I said, I got to show you something, and I showed them one of these videos on YouTube, and they were transfixed to the screen, even Marjorie was. All of us. And what it is. It's simply these companies that decide to clean a carpet. Oh, God. Uh, oh, okay. oh, go on YouTube oh. and look it up. Rug cleaning. Look it up. Cleaning carpets. Cleaning carpets. You will be transfixed. Some of them are about 25 minutes. Some of them are 40. We watch the whole thing from beginning to end. Why? I can watch grass grow. I don't know, Paula. <laughs> to, begin with, to begin with, all the dirt that comes out of these rugs is just amazing. They got these. Is it satisfying? Absolutely <laughs> satisfying. And we figured out why the next day we were discussing it. And one of the reasons we thought it was satisfying was because it doesn't require any brain power on your part to watch. So yeah. you don't get tired from watching it. And every time they go down with more suds and more soap and more mud coming out of this thing, and eventually you start to see the pattern. And then you go, oh, that's really nice. And then it gets better and better. And then they turn it over and clean the other side. And they turn it back over and they clean more and more and more until wait, the please, water finally wait, runs wait, through. Please, please, please stop. <laughs> I'm, I'm totally terrified. <laughs> is, it, is this what we have come to? Oh, yes. Next that time you come to New York, we will show There's you four of us cleaning in front, Wait, wait, wait. There's four of us in front of the television. It's 2024. We're all adult, mature 
people Maybe. and we're watching a fucking carpet getting cleaned. <laughs> and and Can we're all that? and we're all transfixed on it too. You might well, have, I didn't find it as thing. compelling. Huh? So I, I saw did. one so and I didn't did find it as compelling. <laughs> but, but I do think that we have almost reached Mike Judge's idiocracy. Yeah. Oh, in, yeah. Which the, in which the most popular show was what? Ouch my balls. Yeah. <laughs> a guy, a guy gets kicked in the balls. That's the show. See, I would rather watch that than carpets being cleaned. You know, Give me that, and of, we've reached idiocracy. Nobody's thought There's, of doing that on YouTube. Maybe that's a winner. We should do what, ouch my balls. Yeah. What, what Listen, would you stupid... would you be the guy? I'll kick your balls. We can make millions <laughs> off this. I don't want my balls kicked, but if you would do it, I'll I'll kick your balls. Well, since all the prostate stuff, it's kind of numb down there. So you know. <laughs> Ouch, my ball, starring Alex Bennett. <laughs> there was a contestant on that America's Got Talent whose talent was being kicked in the balls. I, well, I don't know. It was okay. Japanese, right? Japanese no, got I, talent. I, I should no, I should have had guy, that. white guy, well, I forget his name, Moose or something like that. I like yeah, this idea for you and me, Alex. Thousands of ways balls. I kick him in the nuts. <laughs> you, you can not only be the youth guru, but you'll be the senior guru after that show. Come here's on, the, think about it. Here's the thing. That, you know, this is kind of what I call passive television, you know, but it, it, it was, we found soothing to the brain to watch this, <laughs> that it in fact required no brain power on your part to watch it, you know, <laughs> and that's good. That's terrific. But they found though that it, it does calm the brain. Yeah. I watched one episode and that was enough for me because. I started masturbating during the. During the <laughs> <laughs> Clean that rock, baby. Back to Caligula. Well, that's, uh, that's exactly. Was that the one where they do the rug with Betty Page on it? <laughs> I never got to the end. I never saw what was on the rug. It was still dirty. <laughs> we cleaned our rug a I, week ago. Before I, that, was on that. What did you say, Jeff? We did it at home. We had a guy come and clean it, and we cleaned yeah, it. But not house. like this. Your rug wasn't this dirty. I this mean, is like they take. They no, take, it didn't look dirty. They take but immense amount. They bring of water. out a lot of stuff. They take an immense amount of water and they flush yeah. it on this rug, and then they turn it over. And on the sides are these troughs that the water goes down, and every now and then they squeegee all the stuff around it. But it it's it's fascinating. I mean, I don't know what it is. It's very it's dirt. But you liked it, Marjorie. It's I did. Filthy. I'm not saying I didn't. So, Dirty, filthy, fun. So how many? How many people, after we have described it, are going to go onto YouTube and watch? How many people take off their shoes when they go into their house and walk with? Ah, good question. <clears throat> Yeah. Asian culture, if you take off your shoes and you have a clean house, right? So people who don't take off their <laughs> shoes and walk into their house, their carpets and everything have all that stuff on it. Well, your significant other is uh, is uh, Asian, right? Yeah, my daughter's half Asian. Yes, you're correct. It, yes. Do they do they? Uh, yes. Do they make take make you take your shoes off of the house? One one hundred percent. Oh, yes. okay. All right. Now, and at my house, we, the same thing. Before you got uh, hooked up, did you do it in your home? Well, I, I've gone out with a lot of Asians. <laughs> so before I was dating any Asians, no, I didn't do that. Oh, okay. So that but was. But now it's like, yeah, now it's definitely required. Yeah. You, you, you go through people's houses in your shoes and you, you clean those carpets. Really, really bad. Yeah. Well, you know, carpets do get dirty. That's there. Yeah, but then you're walking your bare feet with those things too. Well, I have some rugs here that I've had for <laughs> twenty yeah. years, twenty five years. Jeffrey, why are you showing us your shoes? Because you know, I took them off. Take them off. Yeah, we're not wearing in the house. Exactly. Right, Charlie. I I just yeah. never make you know I never make people take off their shoes in my house because I just want them to feel comfortable. I mean, if they'd like to take them off, go ahead. You but know. last time I was at your house, you said, take your underpants off. And I thought that was a little, <laughs> it was a little strange. I complied because it's your house, but. Yeah. Yeah. Did he, Albert? Was, Did he? 
when I was visiting Alex, he told me to take his underpants off. Uh, <laughs> uh, we haven't been joined much by uh, John Ewing today. How are you, John? Fine, Alex. Thank you for asking. Anything you wish to add to this? I mean, do you take you have a house where you take your shoes off? Uh, my wife is uh, very competent in keeping the house clean, and we just had three of our carpets cleaned. She sends them out, and um, good Did experience. Did you watch them being cleaned? Did you watch them? No, but I'm going to check out. No, they, probably, they probably wound up on this uh, YouTube yeah. channel, and the guy <laughs> probably made you know ten thousand dollars off of it. Uh, you know, because for every million people that watch a YouTube video, you get four thousand dollars. So I, I, there's this woman with her golden retriever, and she has a video of the golden retriever. One video of the golden retriever, just one. Four million views. <laughs> now count that up: four million, uh, four thousand times forty-four million. And every million you get four thousand dollars. How much money did you? It's forty-four times four thousand. A lot. That's a lot of money for one video of your that's, goddamn that's a lot. dog. Hundred and seventy-six thousand dollars. Huh? Hundred and seventy-six thousand dollars. Really? One video. When are we gonna put ouch my balls into production? <laughs> it's a huge hit. Come on. Well, I think it's about time because all YouTube really is is a massive version of ouch my balls i wonder if i look up on youtube if there is an ouch my balls <laughs> ouch ouch give my balls give us a second huh? <laughs> <laughs> and they're off. this is my work phone if i get in trouble i'm blaming you <laughs> <laughs> if uh, i think we're gonna have to let brian go he was looking at a video called ouch my balls <laughs> starring alex bennett <laughs> oh boy out of my face nah, my no, good. no good no you didn't did you find it yeah there's an owl my balls owl owl o w oh yeah including o -W, my balls. a clip from idiocracy <laughs> oh there's a south oh. park ouch my balls and that was the number one show on television in idiocracy right that's right yeah Idiocracy is a great movie. Great have, movie. Have you seen it beside us? Yeah. It's yeah, really. We, but by the way, we have surpassed Idiocracy about <laughs> about six eight years ago. Well, the theory we'll, in we'll Idiocracy that. is that all the smart people really didn't want to have children because they didn't want to add to the human race. They didn't want to bring a child into a world like this, or or they just kept waiting and waiting. Meanwhile, these other people, the stupid ones, were copulating like crazy. And so, really, Darwinism would say that we bred intelligence out of the human race. And it's a very funny film. I knew we crossed the line when I caught kids watching pimple-popping videos. Oh, yeah. Oh. I can't oh, watch God. that. I've tried to watch that. When I saw what? Dr. Pimple Popper, I said, I'm all uh. Okay. <laughs> Tiffany, so go, Tiffany goes went, online. I, I, the, the show is not on YouTube. The show is on one of the cable networks. Yeah, Tiffany YouTube goes on good. YouTube. Tiffany goes on YouTube looking for those. Francine, has, looking like look at this one. Seen, Francine looks like she's seen it. Have you seen Dr. Pimple Popper? No, I think they probably got that idea from Seinfeld. That's why it was. Um, no, no, you know, no Seinfeld. And it actually is a Dr. Pimple Popper show. <laughs> the other is the the videos that the kids are watching are cleaning earwax. Oh huh? yeah, they go what? in with a scope inside the ear and pop out earwax. Oh, uh, disgusting! Yeah, yeah. Really. idiocracy at its best. Yeah, I'm waiting for for colonoscopy tube. <laughs> oh, there you, you know go. who was it? I can't my the, colon. I can't remember the comedian <laughs> was that said that we have gotten so low in our expectations about show business and what entertainment is. That one of these, I think it was Dick Cavett years ago, he said, I imagine that somebody, the ultimate act will be somebody coming out on stage and starting his lawnmower. <laughs> you know, and we've gotten to that. I mean, what more is clean, rug cleaning, for instance, or pimple popping or whatever, you know. So. Unboxing. 
Ah. Yeah. Well, unboxing, I understand, you know. Uh, here, you got a box with a new PlayStation. I'm going to open it up, and then I'm going to plug it in, and I'm going to start it up, you know. I, I find those very helpful, actually. Like, if I get something and I want to, if I don't feel like reading the manual, I'll watch the unboxing. When I run into a technical glitch or something that I can't solve, I'll go on YouTube and try Definitely. and see if I can find the Oh, answer. yeah, that would be great. And yeah. many times I will find the answer, you know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, sometimes I don't, but who left us? I got it. Oh, Marjorie left. Marjorie. Yeah. My own wife left. Hot date. Hot well, then I've got to bring this show to an end because she left it. You know. Yeah, uh, but uh, great to have everybody here. I love over oh, here. Marjorie uh, entered the waiting room. No <laughs> Len today. No Len. Yeah, no, He's no on Len. vacation. He's on vacation. Yeah, usually yeah. he'll call just for two minutes just to say that he was on every single day. <laughs> yeah. No, Len, Len was, is on vacation. So. Yeah. And I also got a thing from our friend up in Canada. Uh, Mike. Mike. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, he said he can't do it today either. It's nice of people. What they do is when they can't make it, this group is so nice. They write me a note saying, I can't be there today. Francine, for instance, did it the other day. They're trying uh, to get a hall pass. Excuse that. To get a hall pass. That <laughs> 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 will be on another show. Well, it certainly <laughs> is a, a very nice bunch of people. And I think people watch this because this is akin to the rug cleaning. Nothing much happened. <laughs> But it's a nice bunch of people having a nice time, and we don't see that that often. And uh, you know, uh, we, and, and we, they all they all uh, uh, sign on here uh, to watch uh, Mandy do work. <laughs> oh, turn on your mic. We can't hear you, Mandy. Can't hear you. All right. I yeah. was getting a new computer today, and so he finally got finished and moved out of my seat. Um, but it was all day. I have a complex setup with my computer, but that's why I was late getting on. But I just wanted to get on so I could say, hey, everybody. It, it's wonderful that you did. We always mm -hmm. enjoy seeing you. And we always, let me say goodbye to various people here. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. I got to do this. Uh, it, the last minute of the show, here comes Don oh. Gimbel. <laughs> and uh, Don? I can't. What? I can't make it either. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it was that kind of show, Don. <laughs> we were thinking of you today because Marjorie all day has been watching David Letterman videos that you've produced. Uh, and what were we watching? We were watching the the the, the animal guy, um, who he had on all the time. Which and when was, they had the problem with NBC and he was at CBS laughing. No, I'll, I'll, we watched the whole thing with the whole Leno thing. Oh, oh yeah, there's a two-parter with uh, uh, Dave and the Kona. And then what? Is that the one? No, this was one. There, there's a two-parter with Dave of him and Conan. with about Jay and 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 uh, Conan. And yeah, there's one right after the other. Everything he ever said. Yeah, that's... yeah. So Don... anyway, sorry. Maybe okay. next week. Maybe next week, but it's great to have you here for even a second, Don. Mm. Well, I planned it that way. So, <laughs> when's the last time you've left your apartment? Uh, 1970. <laughs> okay. So now I don't feel so guilty. Good. Yeah. Hey, let me say goodbye to everybody. Let me say goodbye to Paula. Let me say goodbye to Francine. Let me say goodbye to our good friend, uh, Brian Neary, Andrew Deutsch, John Ewing, Charlie. Thank you so much for being here. Charlene, Jeff Stein, Albert Reynoso. Always good to have you here, Albert. Uh, and uh, Mandy, thank you for being here. Marjorie, as always, it's very, what's for dinner tonight? I'll tell you, it's a surprise. <laughs> oh, it's a surprise. Oh, okay. Don Giller, God damn it. You, you've been so good on the show today. I really appreciate it. <laughs> you really... That, that's the sign for distress. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> anyway, we got to go. Oh, boy. And finally, uh, here is the wonderful Edward Berger, who signs us off by saying, That's all, folks. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a nice week. See you next week. <laughs>